I brought you guys on a little late to this one, but let me show you what I've been working on. The steel alone for this handrail is approximately 20,000 pounds. And I know that seems excessive, but let me show you where all the problems stem. What you're looking at here is the channel straddling a piece of wood which is waterproofed and that trough is the actual gutter itself. It's not like your traditional gutter on the outside made out of steel or aluminum. Well that box is just made out of wood and it's not strong enough to support a handrail which is going to be made up of half inch or three quarter inch thick glass panels. So this entire structure's only purpose is to transfer the load all the way down the wall and to the foundation. So the steel is what's supporting the handrail and not the wooden box. These bases are made out of half inch plate and they're gonna be wedge anchored into the concrete foundation which is supporting the post, which is supporting the channel, which is supporting the handrail. And that's how the whole thing works. I didn't design this, this was all engineered. I'm just the, the welder, but that's the purpose of the whole structure. Problem number two is access. This place is located on the top of a mountain, long winding road with switchbacks, and there is nowhere to get equipment, a crane, a forklift, nothing. So I had to design this crane that could be disassembled and carried to the job site and assembled and able to lift approximately 2,000 pounds just to be safe. And this is what I came up with. So I built this crane, each leg is adjustable independently from the other one so there's pins when you get to the height that you want but this this um, what is this like a boat trailer winch it pulls it up to the position and this this whole housing here slides on the tubing And finally, problem number three, which has made me question my life choices on more than one occasion throughout this job. It's these goofy angled wood pieces. Unlike the straight sections that are made out of 12 inch tall wood along its entire length, these pieces were framed out in this weird angular shape. And unfortunately, I have to fabricate two custom pieces of channel that will simulate the rest of the, the look where it just slips over it. And that's where we're at now.
there's two ways that I could have went about doing this and I could have bought extra section of this channel and then sliced it up the middle and put triangle pieces to widen it out in the places that I needed to be widened. The problem is I couldn't get this channel in less than 20 foot lengths and I obviously didn't need 20 feet and it's super expensive. I figured it would be just as easy to make it. The only problem is if you see here the existing flange on that channel is not a normal size flat bar. So you can see here there's like a eighth inch lip all the way. This is four inch flat bar and the flange is like four and an eighth on channel. So I'm gonna have to fill all of this full weld and grind it smooth. On the end, the reason I use the existing channel is because that's what it's tying into in the field. It's already, there's already a channel installed out there and I figured I just had a better possibility of getting a perfect fit up. You can also see there's a pretty generous radius on the existing channel that I'm going to have to grind all this down to match it perfectly. My viewers are women, so pretty, pretty impressive, impressive amount of girls. It's at least four. It's at least four girls. And I'm one of them. And you're one of them. And then my mom. <laughs> so you and my mom, that's two of them, but there's two. So the other two I need to hunt down? There's two strangers out there <laughs> watching my channel. <laughs> I really like this machine because it does stick MIG and TIG. A lot of the times when I'm tacking things up, especially structural stuff, I'll use 7018 stick because it's easier to move everything. You don't have a bottle and a regulator and all that stuff. So that's what we're gonna use this for today, stick mostly. Awesome little machine. It's a Trans Steel 2200 from Fronius. 
it's also dual voltage. So today for 332, 332.7018, I'll be running pretty much all day on 110 volts, but this also will do 220 single phase. Um, really good machine. I'm gonna weld a little bit over here. I don't think the sparks will go over there though. No. But if they do, you have been warned. <laughs> you get my sexy welding attire, all in frame, full frame, 4K, pancake, my new gloves. You guys know this, but don't screw these in all the way, or you'll have a hard time getting them out. They'll get locked up sometimes. We need to go up a little bit more, I think. Wilson. Okay, Let's go. A little more. Oh my gosh. I didn't get any video of the early stages of this job, but we used this crane for all of the long pieces too. We did everything exactly the same. Um, I think the heaviest one was, was just under 2,000 pounds, so it worked great. These are the hangers for the glass. You need to drill and tap the posts to receive these. This is for uh, 5 16 18 tap. There's this padding inside here and it squishes the glass and that's what keeps the glass in place. So I made this jig just so all of the holes are exactly in the same place. And it just sits on top and I free drilled the hole locations. Just like that. This is a Champion XLT tapping drill. And I've seen Jason from Fireball Tool use this a couple times, and that's actually where I got it. You can get it other places. He doesn't make them, but I thought his price was pretty good. And this is a drill specifically for tapping. And the thing that makes it cool and different than just using a regular drill is it has this floating head. So you don't, you know, if you're not going perfectly square, it might save you from breaking a tap. And then also it has auto reverse. I'm also using Champion brand drills and taps for this. And I already drilled all the holes and the drills are amazing. They're um, American made. They're not the cheapest drill bits, but they're really nice. And we're gonna use champion brand taps also split point tap so it pushes the chips forward and we'll see how it goes
the other side on like that and it squishes the glass now I need to weld these butt joints of the channel and I'm using 7018 for the posts and I'm using dual shield flex core for the long 12 inch butt welds because it's just so much faster. This is the brand new Metabo weld shaver. And basically you can think of it like a little portable milling machine. It has a little indexable face mill in it, which is a little over, but I think it's like an inch and a quarter, the cutting diameter. And it takes carbide indexable inserts and they're four sided. So you have, and you have four changes per insert. And Metabo claims that you get 200 linear feet of weld removal before you need to change them, which I thought was pretty impressive. Larry, my local Metabo rep, sent this out to me so I could show you guys, give you guys a demonstration. There's only like two videos on YouTube right now with this tool, and both of them are in like a Fabtech booth or Metabo studio, so there's not really any practical application of this tool. And we're going to do some testing today, basically to see if it's worth it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it this tool is expensive but for a guy like me who easily spends way more time grinding than welding so if this speeds up the process or even makes it so that i don't have to inhale as much grinding dust it's worth it to me it also comes with this magnetic straight edge and i'm not going to be using this today i'm just going to tack a piece of flat bar up there for my guide but this is actually really nice. I haven't used it with this and I know this tool is going to have a lot of vibration so I don't know how it's going to hold but I will say that these are mag switch magnets. So if you're not familiar with mag switch they make a lot of welding tools and these magnets are really awesome. And besides that look how adorable these are. They have this little I don't know puzzle piece so you can line these up. It's kind of one of those things where maybe if you had two or three of them, you might do that. But I think in real life, you're just going to tack a piece of a long piece of steel as your guide, like you do with plasma cutting or anything like that. But still, it's a nice touch. This is about one inch space here. So basically your, your weld has to be able to fit inside this, obviously. It also has variable speeds. I've already used this some and I found that it works really good at three which is, it says 9,900 RPMs is what three is, but this is also the range that it has. So this head here, this is how you adjust the cutter and each division is 30 thousandths, I believe. Really smooth, nice motion. It drops into a, a pin. This handle is adjustable. Really nice looking tool. So about this test, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to time how long it takes to knock down the weld with a grinder. And I'm going to be using this. It's going to be a Metabo disc. I found that these work really well for removing a lot of material really fast. It's a ceramic disc. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's stiff, but they work really well, especially if you let the disc do the work and you don't push on it too hard. But basically what we're testing is removing the bulk of the weld. Whether I'm using this or I'm using the Metabo weld shaver, there's still gonna be some blending at the end with a flap disc just to tie everything together because you don't really wanna take, this is 36 grit, so I don't wanna take this all the way to the base material and have really rough scratches. So basically think of this like the roughing application before you finish, and that's what we're gonna be timing. This thing is awesome. You can see here, I just almost touched 
the base material, the channel. It's a little bit more difficult um, holding it up vertical because you have to main you have to make sure you maintain pressure against the channel. But the thing is a hog, and it could do this in one pass, piece of cake. So with the first pass in the first well of the day, you have to get the height of the cutter figured out. So you have to do two passes. And when I did that, it only shaved about 30 seconds off of the grinding. But then after you get the depth set, you can take all of the welds off in one pass. It's significantly less than how long it took me to grind. It took me between three and three and a half minutes using a grinder. And once I had the height set, it took anywhere between one and one and a half minutes with the weld shaver. It's so much nicer to use. It's, um, you don't have hot sparks all over you and you don't have to wear a mask. You gotta wear hearing protection, but uh, I really like it. I'm actually super impressed with it. I was really hoping to have this whole thing finished in this video, but unfortunately the glass panels are going to take over a month to get plus paint.